I think it takes a lot of fanaticism and willpower to, to be in a band like this. I would say it's been a long, hard road out of hell for us to get to the point we are at the moment. I think that after Erebus album, we did more than 200 shows around the whole world. We've been twice in the United States, playing both coasts and Canada, Europe a few times, Russia, Brazil, Mexico. It was a big lesson for us as a band. It was a big experience and I think it helped us to, to know each other better, to work as a team. I would say that we are some kind of sect, like focused on, on one thing, just getting closer to our goals that we are passing through. Finally, the band and the music and everything that's connected to it becomes the most important thing in your life. Actually, in this lineup, we play more than six years. And it's very hard to find people that get so strong into the band that after all the highs and lows we get through, they are still together, still pushing the machine forward. I can't even imagine this band without concerts. It's uh, actually the core of our activity to confront uh, our music with the audience on live shows. We always use uh, makeups as a um, means of transformation of sorts, something that enables you to, to become someone else for a certain time. It really helps you to concentrate on what you have to do on the stage. In the process, you become someone else, a kind of uh, messenger of a different culture or a messenger of anti-civilization because we are strongly against some aspect of civilization. It is stressed in the, in the lyrics and in the whole message that we get across. Just after coming back from the tour with Mayhem in November, in December last year, we got very bad moment, I think. Me, Adam, ATF, uh, other guys, we had to take care of our, say, private lives with it, so it's quite successful for us that we could record album like Solar Fresh, which is, I think, th this moment, the best Haze album. When opening the studio, I wanted to deliver the top quality for metal music or, I mean, generally, all kinds of rock genres uh, to extreme kinds of metal uh, by combining the digital and analog domains. It was a great pleasure when Adam and Haight uh, phoned us and decided to choose the studio for the recording because um, they didn't know much about the studio, they just knew the people and the idea behind that, that we support thoroughly uh, with our hearts. And um, he knew about our devotion to the music and creating of, of the music. <laughs> It took us like four months to do the songs and uh, working under time pressure. Moreover, I was going through some real nasty shit in my personal life, so it was uh, quite a challenge to focus on writing. But after all, I think I'm really satisfied with the song.
everything is much more serious, everything is much more dark. I think more, I would say, more black metal in, in the music itself. When it comes to content, I think we've never been closer to black metal than we are now. You can sense it in each track of this album. The songs I was working with Hexen and uh, partly with Michal Stachko, the guy with whom I was working on the samples and background structures. The purpose of this was to build up dark and dense atmosphere in the background of the main riffs. We together also did some experimental tracks, which I call Dark Ambient Industrial. We tuned our guitars much lower than it was in the past. It sounds really, really low, but you cannot, you cannot hear it. It's not like first impression. It's more like a, it sounds very organic, a little dirty sound, which is there. Listening to the album, you hear that something hidden inside, that something like under surface. Music itself is not the purpose, it's like a tool that we use to convey a certain message. It is much more important than, than the music actually. For the first time in history, we've had a few guests on an album. First of them is a Greek singer, Andrinikis Kola, a very talented person, and a friend of mine who added some Hellenic atmosphere to two of the songs on the record. One is Watchful Eye of Doom, and the other is Mesmerized. We also invited a Polish guitarist, uh, Mateusz Szemraj, who played Arabic lute in the title track. And he also did a great solo part in the, in the song, Sadness Will Last Forever. After having completed the recordings, uh, we went to Hertz Studio to do the mixes and mastering with uh, Wiesławski brothers. These guys are absolute elite when it comes to producing uh, metal records. Most of the songs on this album are about enslavement on different levels, uh, spiritual, physical, uh, being a slave to the system you live in, to one viewpoint, to other people who think for you, make decisions for you. Enslavement is the key word here. I draw my inspiration from dark aspect of nature, which is something universal, something that doesn't belong to any religion or tradition exclusively. When you look at the cover, you can see a possessed woman who is actually committing suicide, stabbing herself in her left side and showing a savior sign with her right hand. And in the background, you can see the sun eclipse, which symbolizes violent change and uh, downfall, generally. 
It's a very meaningful cover. All the symbols and the layout are there for a reason. Even the colors have their meanings. It's all related to alchemy and esoteric tradition. It's like there's no way back for us. There's no way back. We went so far that we don't want to go back. We want to push everything to that point that makes us satisfied. To what we do, we don't have any distance anymore. Now, it's, it's not a game, it's our fucking life. It's what it is. It's like a new opening for us as a band. It's, it's because we have explored some new territories and uh, we have managed to get in on the next level, both uh, musically and spiritually.